Psalm 56, just um, my notes for uh, Matthew 16, they're ready. I had a ser- I've worked on sermons, I worked on sermons all week this week, as well as other things, but uh, just as the evening went on and the day yesterday and different things were kind of taking place and changing up and things, I just figured let's... Um, Let's take some time and, and just be reminded about what the Bible says uh, to us and the great help uh, that it can be and that it is. And, and uh, so let's look at Psalm 56 and then uh, I'll read it and I'm going to let you stay seated. Uh, not that we dishonor the Lord by staying seated, don't, don't get me wrong there, but we're going to stay seated and then I'll read the passage and our president has called for a, a day of prayer and I think that's a wise thing to do. I think every day should be a day of prayer personally. Um, but we want to at least spend some time in just a few minutes, and I'll read the passage, and then we're going to pray um, specifically for uh, the, the rest of the service, of course, for one another. Um, I would encourage us to be praying for those that uh, are um, affected, let's say, by this virus and uh, all the things that uh, kind of go into the preparation for and, and all that, and certainly there are some who who are infected with that, and so we want to be praying for them, those that are facing quarantine. We have some, not uh, mandatory quarantine, but they've just kind of decided to, to do that themselves, maybe not feeling well today or been exposed to somebody who wasn't feeling well, and so we've got some gone, so we'll be praying for them. Uh, we want to pray for, for those who are in our congregation who are maybe at higher risk for uh, being exposed to, to these things, and, and certainly I don't think that... Um, being exposed to viruses is anything new. Um, we've had viruses around for a little while. Uh, didn't just start, you know, just this past uh, past year or so or past few months. I want to be in prayer for, for those folks. I want to pray for medical professionals, those that are involved with those fields, um, those that are doing the research and, and the leadership of our both of our city and our county and our state and our country. I pray for wisdom for them as they try to make decisions about uh, leading uh, in the, the best way they can, they can try to know how. Pray for our presidents. So I only want to pray for, all, again, all those that are involved uh, with that. And we want to be in prayer, uh, too, for um, our church. Pray for wisdom and pray for direction. Help us. We want to pray and ask the Lord for help to, to be a witness and a testimony. Um, we're here not again, I mentioned this in the Sunday School Hour, and I, please forgive me for being repetitive, but I, I want to catch everyone as much as I can. We're not trying to prove anybody to anything by being here. We're not trying to be better than anybody else. We're not, we didn't advertise that we're going to be in service today so that we could demean other churches. <laughs> I am not about that. Now, I don't think that's godly to do, uh, to be quite honest. But we want to be praying for wisdom for us. You know, pray for me, please. I, I need wisdom in making decisions. And if you, anytime you make a decision, there's going to be some that like you for it and praise you for it, and there's going to be a whole lot of others that are going to say, I oh, can't believe you did that. Well, probably neither can I. Um, but I'm trying to make the best decision that I can in the best, with the best wisdom that I can and trying to ask people that know much more than I do about um, what is best and what is wise to do. And I've tried to do that with uh, our services today and even last night. Um, the county, our county, Travis County, lowered the number for a recommendation for um, postponing things or at the very least uh, doing a term that we didn't know on Monday, social distancing um, from one another, you know, trying to keep a, a certain distance apart. And so we've, we've tried to do away with handshaking for the most part. And I don't want to be afraid of any of those things. But I, I do think it's good to be wise. So we've got, we've done extra cleaning, um, even more than we normally do, or we've done it twice over, uh, just to say that we've done it twice, uh, so to speak. We've got hand sanitation, both in the nursery and in our foyer, and, and all of those things. And so we tried to just do what we can, um, but just pray for wisdom, that we'd make the right decision, and... Um, I would ask us to pray for those in our communities, even our neighbors, that as they are confronted once again with the fact that life is very fragile, whether you are facing a virus or not, um, life is fragile. And, and uh, James said that what is life is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And we want to be wise about how the Lord uses us to be a testimony to those around us. And uh, we certainly don't want to act in fear. Um, we want to be wise, but we want to let it be known that we're trusting in the Lord for this. And certainly we are. 
Um, I haven't lost, um, not to praise me or not to say I'm better, but just I haven't lost a bit of sleep about this. My Heavenly Father's in control of this. Um, I, I don't uh, worry about, I honestly don't worry about that. Um, I remember preachers of old used to use the phrase, uh, you can't threaten me with heaven. I mean, <laughs> sheesh. If, I, if I'm not here, I'm in a much better place. And I don't want to come back here um, as much as I love you. Um, I'm not planning to die, by the way. So some of you are like, what, what's he saying? Um, I'm not planning to. And uh, we're not, um, as biblical as we try to be, we're not going to greet one another with a holy kiss. We're not going to do that in the next foreseeable future. Um, thankfully, we weren't doing that to begin with. Um, but um, you, you understand a little bit of... Again, a little bit of levity can sometimes help. But we want to be a witness to those around us for the matter of eternity. And uh, as much as we can. Uh, all that being said, as we move forward, um, we are planning on having service tonight. I am, I am just expecting that that 250 number that is being, um, has been put out by our city will probably come down. I'm expecting it to come down number-wise, and on a normal Sunday, with everybody involved, we are about 150 people. That's babies in the nursery, that's kiddos in children's church, and in our auditorium here. Um, so we're right kind of on the, the border, the edge of that, um, and we want to comply with as much as we, we possibly can. So we're not talking about canceling. We might do service a little bit different. It might be um, somehow through Facebook Live or, or YouTube Live or one of those things. We might even record a service because of our lack of bandwidth here. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but uh, we might even record something and then put it out and then you, know, you can join in with your family. And I'd encourage you to do uh, any of those steps. Right now, we're moving forward. And we're trusting the Lord and doing whatever it is that, that the Lord allows us to do within... Um, wise parameters, all right? We're, we're trying to go on the recommendations of those in authority. Um, fancy that we've been in First Peter chapter number 2 and chapter number 3 that talks about um, submitting to those in authority over us, and I think that's a wise thing to do to be a good testimony. And so we're trying to do all of those things and still honor the Lord. And, and um, if you study history, I, I know, I'm rambling on, um, but if you study history, there have been times um, when things like the Spanish flu or the plague were going through um, communities and countries. And churches, just like ours, shut down for a certain time. And they didn't have the privilege of the Internet. They just they tried to do what they could at the time and, and tried to um, be a good testimony, a good steward, as well as protect their, fo their flocks and their congregations. And, and that is number one on my mind is each one of us and the folks who are in our congregation and wanting to care as best we can for them and, and still understand that God has instituted the local church to be an encouragement to one another. And I believe he's done that already today and trust he will continue to do that. But I checked on a few of our folks yesterday, just some of our elderly folks who might not be able to get out and about or are scared to. And hey, can we bring you groceries or can we do some things for you that would be a help to you. And if you know of others, I uh, appreciate uh, others of you that have done that. Thank you very much. Some of you have texted me and said that you checked on folks. And I, I'm grateful uh, for that. Um, but let's be praying for those as well. And if we can be a help in some way, maybe to a neighbor that doesn't even come to our church. And we've got some extra supplies, whatever that might be. Um, and we can give some to them that they're not maybe able to get out or, or even afford some of those things. And we want to help in any way that we can uh, with that, both personally and, and institutionally as a church. So be praying for wisdom uh, is what I want to uh, finish with there. Let's read Psalm 56 and then I'll pray. And then I'll just kind of ask each one of you to pray. And, and certainly we want to use our altars before the message. And, and I don't plan to be extended this morning. Um, but uh, we, we'll just spend some time and, and ask the Lord to pray. And if you'd rather pray at your seat, you're welcome to do that. But we're just going to spend some, some time, just a few minutes in prayer uh, as well for, for these requests. Let's read Psalm 56, beginning in verse number 1. Just great truth. I love the Bible. There's a lot of places we could turn. This is just where I think the Lord kind of directed me. Psalm 56, verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. That's a tremendous verse. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. 
Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. That's an interesting thought. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? I'm just going to speak this morning on when I am afraid. So let's spend some time, just again, a few minutes, and we're going to pray. And you're welcome to use the altar. You're welcome to pray at your seat. But we're just going to spend a few minutes to pray, and then I'll come back up, and I'll close this in a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the message this morning. Now, Lord, thank you once again for the privilege to be here this morning. We're thankful uh, for the health that you have given us thus far. And Lord, we uh, do want to thank of those, uh, even in our own congregation, who, um, because of not feeling well, they have decided to uh, stay home. We certainly uh, understand that, and we would even agree with that. Uh, we're trying to uh, do the best that we can. But we pray for your healing hand upon them. Just maybe um, through whatever symptoms or circumstances, they're, they're not uh, feeling uh, the best to be here. Help them and heal them. We think of those even in our own uh, state, even in our own city, we've got some who, Lord, have been diagnosed with this. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give healing to them. And somehow the gospel might be presented to them if they are in need of uh, trusting Christ for salvation. We pray for every um, health care worker, all those in that profession. Lord, thank you for the, the work that they are doing, certainly under all kinds of pressures and, and uh, all their own fears that they deal with. We pray for comfort and help for them. Lord, help those in our own congregation who work in those fields. And Lord, help them to be a testimony and uh, to trust in you. And uh, we certainly pray for protection for them. We pray for those even working in grocery stores and, and uh, shopping areas. Lord, as uh, some just uh, kind of uh, don't treat the warnings uh, as they should, uh, Lord, we pray for safety for them and, and help for them also. Please help our leadership uh, here in our city. Help our mayor and city council and folks that uh, are trying to make the best decisions that they can give them wisdom. Help uh, our county officials and, and, Lord, those in our state. We're, we're grateful for leadership. We pray for wisdom for them and, and the counselors that they uh, have surrounded themselves with. Give them direction and discernment to make the best decisions. And, Lord, we pray for our president and, and certainly our vice president and those are, that are in authority. And we pray for help and wisdom for them also. And uh, we just pray that to those that are in authority that you have uh, brought into those places that you would give them direction. Thank you that as we even talked about in the Sunday school hour this morning, you as the, the rivers of water, you direct the hearts of the king. And so, Lord, we pray that you would do just that. Give them direction and, and wisdom in what they do and, and how they make decisions in the coming days. Certainly, many of them uh, under the stress and, and uh, the, the lack of, of rest. And so they need help. We do pray, uh, Lord, for our church. Help us to be a witness and testimony in our own community. Lord, help us not to have a haughty attitude or, or go out of here in pride that, well, we met and others didn't. Lord, that is not what we're trying to do. We, we do want to encourage one another, and so help us to do that. But help us to be wise about, um, you know, just being close and, and not transmitting what we might have or what we don't even know that we have. We, we pray for help in that. And keep us, again, keep us safe and healthy. And, uh, Lord, if we can be a help to someone, whether that's in our congregation or, Lord, whether that's a neighbor or a friend or a co-worker or even a fellow student, help us, please, to be a help to them in any way that we can, that we might be the hands and feet of Jesus, so to speak, and, Lord, that we might serve other people. Thank you again for the opportunity that we have to meet here. Thank you for this passage of Scripture. Thank you for who you are. And, Lord, thank you that we can put our trust in you. So very grateful that you are before all things and by you all things consist. 
And uh, Lord, we, we certainly pray for wisdom and discernment in these uh, interesting and uh, certainly demanding days. We love you. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to live in these days. And we ask now your help in Jesus' name. Amen. I do think that um, what we are going through, uh, and others have said it before me, um, but I think that the days and times in which we are living currently are just a, a bit of a shadow of what will take place, especially at the time of the rapture. Can you imagine what it's going to be like on this earth when um, many of us, well, all of those, those of us who have trusted in Christ, will be caught up together in the clouds? And uh, just looking forward to that day, but it is going to be a little bit of a panic on this earth as those that are left behind scramble to understand what is going on. Certainly many of them, I believe, will be faced again with the truth that they have heard in the time before the rapture. Uh, and I believe that uh, God uh, allows things like this to take place to, number one, help the world understand judgment day is coming. And uh, we certainly don't use that as a threat, but we understand that God does use things like this. And he, I think he also uses uh, these days in the lives of Christian people to get us to understand that when a tragedy or something like this takes place, we find all kinds of people out there preparing, preparing for what's coming and preparing for supplies and all of that about a virus. And yet, sadly, God's people are not preparing for the end of days. Uh, and I think that can be a tragedy. And so I do think that God does allow these kind of things at times to bring about um, in our minds the idea that you and I need to be preparing for the, the, the last days. And certainly I believe we live in those days and in those times. I think the, certainly there is nothing on God's timetable as far as the Bible uh, tells us that is hindering the Lord's return. It is all in His timing. And I just need to be faithful, and we need to be faithful to, to be serving Him. But I do think that God can use opportunities like this, rather than us living and dwelling in fear, and that can be a real emotion, rather than us doing that, we can be a testimony and witness in the day and time in which we live. And certainly we want to do that this morning. Now as we look at Psalm 56, I think one of the worst emotions we can experience or we can go through is that emotion of fear. And you, you think about even in the, the, the movie industry has, has used the element or the emotion of fear um, to honestly build a fortune in all kinds of these movies and, and television shows to, to feed on that, that common human emotion of fear. And, and fear is mentioned, in fact, 385 times throughout our Bible. And it is certain what we can understand from that is God understands that we can be fearful as his children, but yet that God also has a plan when you and I are fearful. He's not necessarily mad at us for being fearful, but he does say, child, be not afraid. Don't fear. And he says it time after time after time after time. And I think in our passage this morning, I think David felt fear many times in his life. And as he writes this psalm, we're able to see exactly how God... Um, intended man to deal with these issues, these, these fears that came up about in his life. And so let's look here at the passage and, and let's just ask ourselves some questions. Number one, where are my fears coming from? Where are my fears coming from? Notice the first three verses here. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, he fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. It is interesting to, to know that when David is writing Psalm 56, he's not writing it from his throne room. He is writing this from a Philistine jail. He has been taken into captivity by the Philistines. In fact, if your Bible has uh, some little superscriptions there, right below maybe where it says Psalm 56, you can see that, that uh, in, in some of those Bibles, some maybe even yours, it says, to the chief musician, he gives an instrument name there. I'm not going to work to pronounce that this morning. But it's a miktam of David. It's a song of David, a psalm of David. Notice, when the Philistines took him in Gath, he's, he's been arrested, so to speak, and um, let's just be reminded who the Philistines were in David's life. Um, you remember Goliath, the Philistine from Gath? Um, David is on enemy territory here. And he's been taken into this Philistine jail cell. And he is, he's, for good reason, he is fearful for his life. He, he's considering his life. 
And right now, it seems like David is, is, is living a life that is just filled with problems. Now, if, you, if you'll go back in your mind's eye and go back as Scripture gives us in, in 1 Samuel 16... When Samuel comes to David's household and, and his father Jesse, he anoints David to be the next king over all Israel. Now, it, that didn't sit well with his brothers, who all thought, uh, I'm better suited than David is. And if you remember the storyline, uh, Samuel comes to, to Jesse's house, and Jesse lines up all of those brothers. And yet, Samuel, because the Holy Spirit is leading him, he says, is there anybody else here? And Jesse, the father of David, says, well, I mean, there's one more, but he's a shepherd. Why do you want him? He, he's like the youngest one. He, he's not worthy of, of doing what you're, you're asking of him or worthy of what you're, you're going to do. Everyone else thought that, that there would be a much better candidate for king than David. Not long after that takes place, we see David in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. He is fighting Goliath, the Philistine, in the valley of Elah. And David kills Goliath, and Israel wins this great victory over their enemy, the Philistines. And so as a result, then, David is brought into Saul's presence to be a musician, if you remember kind of the storyline there. And he is, as Saul has this temper that rises up with him, God uses David as he has given him gifts and abilities and talent in playing the harp to calm the very spirit of, David, of, of Saul, rather, if you remember, um, remember those passages of Scripture. But it doesn't take long for Saul to become jealous of David. Saul has slain his thousands and David has slain his, his ten thousands. And so Saul begins to enter this, this lifelong quest for the rest of his days... To, to kill David, to eliminate David out of his court, out of his life. And it goes on for months and months and months. And, and as you read through much of 1 Samuel, David is running for his life. And, and that he's fighting these, these fears and these emotions. And, and surely his mind had to go back to, wait a minute. <laughs> I remember kneeling down before the prophet. I remember him pouring oil on my head and, and telling me that I would be the next king of Israel. And... God, I don't know if you know this or not, but it doesn't seem like what you said is going to take place. We live in similar times, God. You, you said you'd be with us, and yet it seems like this is, is encroaching on my safety. And, and I'm, I'm having to hole up inside my house, and, and people are taking things out of my cart at the grocery store. And Lord, I'm running out of toilet paper. I'm, I'm getting nervous here. What's the problem? Well, are you going to take care of us? And it comes to the point in David's life where David has gone into the land of his enemy. He, he's, he's running from Saul and he's run so far that he comes into the, the, the land, the territory of his, his arch enemy, so to speak, the, Philipp, the Philistines. And he's seeking refuge from the pursuit of Saul. In fact, um, hold your place in Psalm 56. Look at 1 Samuel. Turn back to 1 Samuel 21. 1 Samuel 21. Look at verse 10. 1 Samuel 21, verse 10. David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. I just, I can't imagine... What emotion he must have been going through. Well, I killed your champion, and then I told everybody to kind of grab their sword and take out as many of you as they could, but now I'm coming to you. And so it's kind of like he's between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. If I do this, I'm wrong, and if I do this, I, I could be dead. Verse 11, And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David, <laughs> he's sitting right there. Hello, I'm here. David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, 
ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? And then just so you understand that the Lord himself has a sense of humor, he gives us the words that Achish said in verse number 15. I think it's funny. Have I need of madmen? In other words, I got enough of you crazies around me. I don't need one more. Have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Chapter 22, verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Surely when David slew Goliath and the remaining army of Israel killed many of the army of the Philistines and several of those now had, who had control of David, so to speak, they, they lost friends, they lost relatives in that battle as David directs Israel to kill those Philistine army, uh, those, those army folks. They're now looking, if you will, for revenge. And it's not a good place for David to be. And the Bible says, yes, he's fearful of Saul, and he's so fearful that he runs to his enemy, and then he becomes fearful of his enemy. And notice, first of all, that, that externally, fear comes as a result of our enemy. I, we, we, we saw it there in verse number 1 of Psalm 56, be merciful unto me, O God. This is David's prayer as he's in that court of the Philistines. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting, and notice how often he is fighting against David. Daily. He fighting daily oppresseth me. And it doesn't just have to be the enemy of a human. It can be what we might consider to be something like this virus that we don't understand really most of what is, is involved with this. Or it could be a, a lack of food or a lack of finances or, or uncertainty in the future. It could be a lost job. You understand all of these things can, can come in and they can cause real fear in, in the life of even good Christians. Even the, the, the individual who is a man after God's own heart can experience fear. It's a real thing. That word in Psalm 56, verse number one, that word oppresseth, it's an interesting word. It literally means to crush or to hold back or to be afflicted. And so David's enemies here, what David is saying is his enemies are, are, are striking fear of him because they're daily crushing him. They're, they're daily afflicting him. Your enemies, no one expects your enemies to treat you well. I mean, that, that, that's why they're their they're, they're enemies. Is they're, they, they're, they have something against you. By the way, I would be reminded that you and I, more so than what we might perceive to be a public hatred or anger against us, maybe even as Christians, as followers of Christ, those aren't our enemies as much as Satan is our enemy. We have a real enemy. And lest we be reminded, he is out there daily seeking to destroy you. He wants to devour you and I. Externally, outside, those things that maybe we can't control. Yes, fear is a result of our enemies. But notice internally what David says in verse number 2. Is that fear is often a result of my emotions. And my emotions can get out of whack. And I can look and, and perceive things that are going on externally that I have no control over. And then I allow that to affect what's going on internally. And that's really when trouble comes is when I allow my emotions to kind of get out of control. Verse 2, Psalm 56, mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. So he's got verse 8, he says, notice what he is, these emotions in him are bringing up. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my, notice my tears into thy bottle. Look at verse 9, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. So David is going through all kinds of emotions and he feels like at this time, and by the way, physically he is also alone during this time. He, he's the only one that has entered into this camp of the Philistines, into their, their capital city, if you will, the, the city of Gath. He has presented himself before the king and before all of these people and you can, almost, um, you can almost hear them as they begin to draw their sword out of their sheath like, here we go. Our God's delivered our enemy into our hand. 
And David is thinking through this. He, he's feeling this emotionally. In fact, we read 1 Samuel 22, verse number 1, that as David then flees them, he, he's, he's faked himself to be a mad person. He's scrabbled at the doors, and he's, he's acted like a crazy person, and he's spit down his beard. All of those things he, that take place, and he leaves there, and he finds the cave of Adullam. And when everybody else finds out about it, finally where he is, then they come to help him. So he's dealing with all of this, from his own perspective, and there's no one that is kind of speaking some truth into his life of, hey, David, did you remember that God anointed you? Hey, David, did you remember that God has already chosen you and he'll, he'll protect you? Do you remember what you said, David, in 1 Samuel 17, that uh, I'm not afraid of that giant. God used me to kill the lion and the bear. He's going to take care of me here. But when you get alone... And this is one thing that I, I, I pray for our own congregation and those that uh, aren't able to maybe come and, and enjoy the, the encouragement, the edification of being together with God's people is that they can get fearful and they can get alone. And I think of our, our widows and widowers and, and uh, folks who, who are spending time alone and it can be very fearful for them. And that's why I would encourage us as their church family to reach out to them. And to help them and, and, and reassure them and say, man, I'm, aren't you glad that we serve a God? that We, we can trust in him. And, and we're here to help you any way that we can. But, but internally, fear is a result of our emotions. <coughs> but notice verse number three. And I love this. <clears throat> God is not the reason for David's fear. What time I am afraid, I will trust in in fact, what David says is that God is the opposite of fear. See, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And, and part of that sound mind, there, there's so many things that go into that. But the power isn't necessarily in, in me and in my flesh. The power is in Almighty God. The, the love isn't necessarily my love because I'm going to love myself and take care of myself first and foremost. I'm not going to look to reach out to other people. Are you kidding me? Why should I reach out and touch someone? You remember that statement a long time ago? I know, I'm a little bit older than what some of you think. It's God's love. I act through God's strength, and I act and behave myself through God's love for me and his love for other people that he wants to show through me, and then he's given me a sound mind. In other words... My emotion, my way of thinking is not based on what the world around me says or what the latest cable news report is. Heaven forbid that. But it's on what God's truth says. This is where I find a sound mind. This is where I am reassured of God's love for me, his care for me. And so our fears can come from a, a mixture of outside or external threats and from internal inside feelings and usually the outside is again the one doing the affecting of the inside and they seem to just work well together to make us afraid and we get to where we we cause hysteria and I, I, in in the last few days we've seen a little bit of hysteria we've seen store shelves just eliminated and the reason why we have to now go to the grocery store is because other people are freaking out. Freaking out. And when God is saying, child, I can take care of you. And at the, at the, the most part, if you do end up taking your last breath on earth, child, if you're mine, your next breath is in the presence of, of Almighty God. Man, I, well, that sounds like a good deal. And I can take rest in that. And I can trust in my God that, yes, he will watch over me. Yes, he knows the very hairs of my head. <laughs> Just trying to help him out. With that. <laughs> but I can trust him. He loves me. He loves you. One final passage, and we'll close for this morning. Look at Isaiah 43. Many of you know this passage, or you, you'll be reminded when we read it. 
Isaiah 43, obviously written by the prophet Isaiah under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but he's written to the nation of Israel. And Israel, if you remember, the, really the, the main thrust of the book of Isaiah is, is God is using Isaiah to give prophecy to God's people, specifically in the southern territory of Judah, because judgment is coming and Nebuchadnezzar is coming to, specifically to Judah and Jerusalem to ransack the place, to ruin it. In God's judgment, because they aren't following God, they aren't trusting God. Well, God uses Isaiah and he uses his prophet Jeremiah to give the, the foretelling of these things. But in the, same, in the same book, as you look through the book of Isaiah, you'll see that God also brings reassurance to his people. Hey, when I bring my hand to judgment, I'm also going to bring not fear, but safety. You know, Israel, that I love you and I've chosen you and you're in the palm of my hand. I'll take care of you. So notice what he says, chapter 43, verse number 1. Yes, it's to Israel in the immediate context. Can God's children in this day and time also understand that God has this, or feels the same way toward us? Yes. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Don't you love this? Fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. <laughs> Here's another great statement. Thou art mine. We're his. So notice verse number two. Is the first word, this is an easy one, is the first word in Isaiah 43, 2, if or when? When? It's not if. But when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Because you're so strong to withstand it? No. Look at verse number three. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi, God is the same yesterday today, forever. He doesn't change. He loves and takes care of his children. Is it wrong to be fearful? No, no. Sometimes that stuff comes from outside and it's hard to get my emotions kind of wrapped around it because all that I can see is all that I can see. But I can squelch those fears by trusting in my Savior who loves me. Our God is not surprised by the coronavirus. Nor is he worried about it. I think he can use it in and through his children to be a testimony to the world around us who might be living in nothing but fear. And I, I know, I, listen, I, my heart goes out. There are some of our, in our own congregation who, this is spring break week, and some of you have had vacations canceled and, and trips ruined, and oh man, my heart goes out to you. I, I get it. I'm, I'm, ugh, I hate that. Man, I love it when people get to go and enjoy time. But can I just encourage you? Nothing to fear. Be a testimony in whatever God allows you to do this week and some of you the following week as school has been extended out. And I'm telling you, all of us are going to live lives of uncertainty in these days. And it's gonna, it's, it seems like it changes every hour. Something different, something new. New numbers come up every hour. You know, we just, we kind of get all this information that keeps on getting assimilated. Can I encourage you? Let's trust in God. Let's just follow our God. He knows what he's doing. And as, as those authorities who have been placed over us kind of give some direction and help, we're going to do our best to try to comply with those things. There's nothing in what has been released that, that is, they're not persecuting us. Everybody's under the same restrictions. But we can serve our God. and We can trust in him. And so as in the coming days, I'd encourage you and I'd ask for your help and your flexibility, for your prayers. Let's work together on this rather than separate and be apart from one another. All right? Let's trust our God. What time I'm afraid, boy, I can trust in him, and I'm grateful for that truth. We are probably going to finish this tonight. So you can come back at 6. We're, gonna, we're not having choir practice. We're going to try to practice social distancing. Don't get in my bubble. But we're going to come back at 6, and we're going to enjoy just singing and uh, some time together around God's word. All right, so let's pray. Lord, thank you.